Today we are building a small two-way stereo speaker set with Dayton Audio Drivers sponsored by Parts Express. And if you want to build speakers like this yourself, head over to the website and use the discount code SOUNDBLAB to get $10 off any purchase of $100 or more. The enclosures are made from 12mm plain all-round solid pine wood from my local hardware shop. Here I'm gluing two pieces together for a wider board. Uh, you could also use a half inch birch plywood or 12mm medium density fiber board if you want. After the glue dries and uh, I've removed the clamps, um, just sanding it with the orbital sander to get a smooth finish uh, and then it's off to cutting all the parts that I need. I used my mitre saw to cut the bevels for the panels uh, but you can also just make straight butt joints if you do not have the ability to cut bevels. I set up a router with a rabbit bit to cut out uh, rabbits in the side, bottom and top panels of the enclosure to recess the baffle and the back panel. The parts are all laid out in order against a straight edge and where they come together it is taped securely with masking tape. I can then flip over the assembly and start the glue up and clamping process. I got these clamps a few years ago and have not used them much but they are very handy when you need them. Uh, these clamps use a metal strap, however you do get similar clamps that use a nylon strap and uh, they are most likely a bit easier to use. I will put a purchase link in the description. Here yeah, I am marking out the position for the holes where the tweeter and the woofer goes on the front baffle. I started off wanting to make the baffle from the same 12mm pine, but I was not able to drill a clean hole with my adjustable hole cutter. The wood kept splitting on the edges uh, and I decided to rather use 12mm uh, MDF. And this worked much better and resulting in cleanly cut holes. I used a 45 degree bevel router bit to cut a bevel in the front of the hole for the woofer since I will be mounting the woofer from the inside of the enclosure. To create some finer detail on the baffle, I cut a small rabbit uh, around the baffle to create a shadow line. Spending some time on sanding is always important to get a smooth finish on a wood surface. Unfortunately, I lost my footage of finishing the enclosure in a spray on clear polyurethane and the MDF baffle in a lacquer undercoat and top coat in white.
These small MDF strips are glued in place so that I have a larger area to screw down the back panel. These binding posts are also available from Parts Express as well as the other drivers and crossover parts used in this project. See the purchase links in the description below. And remember to use the discount code SOUNDLAB and you will get $10 off any purchase of $100 or more. The 3 inch Dayton audio woofer is mounted to the back of the baffle. Luckily these drivers come with an extra foam gasket in the box, a very nice touch from Dayton audio indeed. I am using the 4 ohm ND90 3.5 inch aluminum comb full range driver from Dayton audio. It is constructed well for such a small driver and has a sensitivity of about 86 decibels. The tweeter is much easier to mount and just fits into the hole I drilled and is screwed down from the back with four screws. The tweeter is the 4 ohm ND20 FB rear mount 3 quarter inch soft dome neodymium tweeter also from Dayton Audio with a slightly higher sensitivity of 90 decibels. I also lost the footage of gluing in the port brace. You can see it here in the bottom inside the enclosure just before I glue in the front baffle. One of the final steps is to assemble the crossover for each speaker. The crossover was modeled in XM software after measuring all the drivers with a mini DSP U-Mic 1 and measurement software. I ended up with a crossover point between the woofer and the tweeter of roughly 4200 Hz with a third order high pass filter on the tweeter and a second order low pass filter on the woofer. I'm very happy with the result and you can see a frequency response graph at the end of the video.
With the crossover assembled, we can hot glue the board in place inside the enclosure and use some polyfill towards the top and back of the enclosure to prevent sound waves reflecting back to the cone of the woofer. This graph shows the frequency response of one speaker measured on axis at 15, 30 and 45 degrees. Uh, the tweet might seem a bit bright uh, at the on axis response, but I would suggest listening to these facing straight ahead and not towed in towards the listener, which will generate a very good flat response on the 15 and 30 degree angles. I have made build plans available for purchase on my website for this build. Please go check it out via the link in the description. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and find me on Instagram to keep up to date with future projects. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I'll be back next week with a sound test. Until then, adios.